Welcome, 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 my lords, ladies, and gentlemen, to a combined episode today. This is a combined uh, uh, version of the monograph lives that we do for the networks and the Deductionist podcast, where both audiences are now allowed to meet. I thought I would basically share one of the episodes that we do in the network on a weekly basis that are dedicated to uh, the chapters of the monographs in turn for us to be able to look at and and build upon from there so we are up to the hounds in monographs one at the minute which is oh uh, uh, uh good evening paula good evening sir um, which is specifically connected to uh, uh, pets in general, which is something that we have, again, looked at a few times. So we're just going to go over the uh, the information that is connected to this particular chapter at large. There emerges a young fellow under 30, amiable, unambitious, absent-minded, and the possessor of a favourite dog, which I should describe roughly as being larger than a terrier, and smaller than a mastiff. It's it's one of those things for the aspects of uh, 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 deduction and people reading and understanding human beings that yes, you can you can gain a, a, a direct behavioural insight into how people take care of their children and how well adjusted or indeed mal adjusted certain family members are. Uh, in relation to the uh, the the paradigm that's been set up uh, set up in the home itself, the same things can be said for the animals that somebody chooses to take care of and how they choose to take care of the animals in question, whether that be a dog, cat, bird, fish, or some kind of um, tropical animal. Let's call it some kind of uh, domesticated walrus i don't know i'm sure there's something that exists out there somewhere um but the the whole kind of fascination for this particular topic comes out of the fact that i am the, the 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 dog version of the crazy cat lady from the simpsons um but that particular quote from silver blaze is there any point to which you would wish to draw my attention to the curious incident of the dog in the night time. The dog did nothing in the night time. That was the curious incident, said Holmes. Good evening, Hen. Hope you're well. Hope you're well. Um, Paolo is saying in the, uh, in the Facebook chat, it also reminds me of the psych episode in the first season when he first met Juliet. Absolutely. Hey to Henrika as well. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Welcome. Um, so yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's it's so much more as a as a as a behavioural insight. It's so much more than simply noting animal hair, right? Which media tends to fancifully turn it into. There is a small or large living thing that connects to it, right? That has a specific regimen that one must go through in order to make sure that it is healthy and looked after and is happy in its own little environment as it as it can be right now one of the things that we uh, that we did within this chapter we go through a, a you know a few um examples first of all but it's to look at the idea of uh the the personality profiling parts of somebody i mean we've all heard you know this notion of i've just said it myself uh, i'm a cat uh, i'm a dog person or that some people will reference themselves as a cat person and so on and so forth there is a, a, a small branch uh, of research into this area very small um and i've no idea off the top of my head uh of its uh systemic connections towards the peer review process suffice it to say uh, it's something that sam gosling has been involved in 
uh, for those of you that don't know who that is, that's the guy that wrote uh, Snoop, uh, What Your Stuff Says About You. Great book, wonderful book. He's a, he's a professor in Austin, Texas. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, the singular connections that uh, the initial foundation of this chapter comes across is is based on uh, is based on this particular work wait nate's birthday it's nate's birthday happy birthday man 37 years young fair play well happy birthday what are you doing here listening to this beardy weirdo waffle on on the internet go and go and raise a glass with your lovely wife sir and uh have a great day happy 4th of july as well to you um as a as a side note but yes so the um the main things that we can look at are, are dog personalities cat personalities rabbits and guinea pig per personalities fish spiders and snakes and then it gets a little bit more um well niche for sure legally and country based specific okay so that's when you you could you could start to look at uh, uh hello bilbo tnp as well you could you could start to look at um you know the the, the domestication i mean that's not really domestication but you know it goes on of, of of tigers and big cats living in households whether they would actually say that they are kept as pets or you know russia and it's and it's infamous connection to bears i only say it's infamous connection towards bears because the people that i've seen who have bears in their backyard and roaming around their house and the like it's only been two different ones and they've both been russian right so that's those are the nuanced areas that we that we don't really need to focus on because they are few and far between and the specific requirements for the care of the animal will speak volumes in that initial instance anyway but suffice it to say the looks in uh, of the information in the chapter speak to uh, the dog personalities being caring compassionate people uh, that would need to regularly walk and clean them and feed them and keep them warm. Um, and you would be able to tell uh, a healthy dog from its clean coat and friendly demeanor, which is something that needs to be learned in the household. So the dog can speak information for the surroundings and the area that it would grow or vice versa. You can read the human in order to understand a bit more about the dog. The cats in these scenarios, uh, a person with an incredible sense of self, and uh, that's, my, uh, that's my phone going off, incredible sense of self and who they are, uh, uh, much like how cats uh, uh, clean themselves and go wandering the streets at, at night to make their own fun. You know, this is the independence connection towards cat people. Uh, rabbits and guinea pigs, statistically, demographically speaking, the uh, uh, the pets of children uh, they're usually owned by people that spend a lot of time at home and have no problem with long periods of time spent on the floor um <laughs> Paolo, to be honest you think tigers are cuter than cats well <laughs> you know uh, uh, cuteness is certainly in the eye of the beholder then for sure because I, I feel the same about bears um but that's that's neither here nor there um Fish, a lone goldfish bowl with a couple of small fish in are typically owned by children, but the personality traits can be extrapolated again for the owners of aquariums and koi ponds. For children, it's to ingrain the qualities needed to look after something successfully and show responsibility, which is part of growing up. And um, for the elder among them, it's to show people uh, uh, who aren't particularly emotionally stable. Uh, pets are meant to sh are meant to be shown affection and not watched. The exception to this rule is allergies. Fish are, however, known as the best pet for stress relief. So there was a particular straw poll done um, done across uh, students in America a good number of years ago, 
and the most common uh, animal kept was fish for stress reasons and the calming effect that it has. Um, then we get into the kind of uh, the, the niche areas and you know that's something that we could spend a lot of time in anyway but what that would require alongside it is this um, understanding for the uniqueness of their care right and with it comes a deeply uh, ingrained connection to a lot of people's biases right because I know a good number of people that have owned or do own at this moment spiders right and the spiders tends to run the the, the 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 polarized area of information from people that think they're gorgeous and cute and adorable to people that want to run a mile and kill them all with fire there's some gray area in the middle in that way so normally when somebody says that they keep spiders regardless of the reason uh, uh, it tends to bring out these kind of polarizing qualities which if you are you know a, a a a cat person you might have particularly strong feelings about you know a fish because your 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 cat has tried to get in the fish tank so often if you're a dog person you might have particularly strong feelings about cats and so on and so forth these biases run in connection towards the other areas so as much as it can be revealing about the individual it's also revealing about the self right i was saying this to uh, i was saying this to my guys uh, the other night if you are aware of or have brought to your attention a bias of yours that you are actively doing nothing with or nothing for or nothing about i can't use you right because you are actively acknowledging then that there is a a, a short-sightedness to your ability to reason critically think observe whatever synonym you want to use and you're choosing to do nothing about it I can't use you then, right? If you are okay to have biases, as we all are, awesome. That's fabulous. It doesn't belong uh, within the specific work that we do, right? It doesn't belong there because you're not fit really to judge the worth of information until it's been properly explored. And you can't properly explore it if it's through the lens of a bias, right? So this is why when it comes to the particular particular uh, tropical side of of owning animals spiders uh, 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 you know lizards uh, I, I, that that type of thing the, the 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 statistically uncommon you are better served in looking at the specificities for the care right then you are the indulging of any particular behavior or bias that you might have right you can certainly look at um the the commonalities of experience in in terms of uh, uh the 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 demographic states of what kind of people usually own snakes and why outside of a zoo, a zoo or some kind of terrarium uh, that they would live hey jennifer's here um that they would live in when i hear cat people the only thing i think of is malcolm mcdowell <laughs> nice <laughs> Right. So the, these are these are the things that we would need to think of. Forgive me for being um, particularly uncouth, but uh, I'm uh, I'm working on some business as well in the meantime, and I need to keep my uh, my signal app um, open. Uh, I need I need this information coming in at the same time. But there it is. I've never I've never heard anything from you guys, uh, and that's the end of it. So. We then move into in the chapter the how to tell cat and dog people apart right which is arguably the most common it's arguably the most common in the western society so the the initial sample survey that i've cited here is from a group of just under five thousand people it was recovered from presspetside.com to understand people's preferences on the two animals just specifically the two um right and where it fell is 74 percent like dogs a lot and 41 percent favor cats 
the other information that came out of it is it's it seems to be from this from this group of people uh, who came from all walks of life by the way uh, men women old young rich working class let's call it <laughs> um, but this is a good number of years ago now because it came out in the monographs right um, well I lost my uh, uh, here it is. Conversely, it's easier to hate cats over dogs, even if you have no particular preference over the two. Only 2% of the group hated dogs the most, possibly due to the nature of the animal in relation to care and the relationship that's then developed from it as a result. This, this study kind of made the argument that it's easier to develop a kind of pair-bonded relationship with such an animal that relies on you than is an animal that doesn't, right? We're not talking about the quality of the relationship or the specific nuances, whatever. It's just easier to develop because of the nature of the beast in the same way that if you think of somebody that you disagreed with, you could still develop a relationship with them for sure, but it would be easier for you to develop a relationship with somebody that agreed with you, right? This is, this is the kind of trade-off no way and it's you know it it tends to um incite the bias connection again like i was i was talking to a, a group of hypnotist friend of mine friends of mine and you know they've all been in the game for years collectively i think it's over a hundred years between them all um I, I, you know if you add up all of their experience um and, and I, I simply said, I've never experienced any value from it. None. I've never seen any value in hypnosis. And I specifically said it that way just to see where it would land in terms of who got what I was saying, who didn't get what I was saying, who had annoyed, who found it funny. That type of hook in the statement. And... The second that I said it, the majority of them were inflamed because it's this area that they've that they've developed most of their life from. And when I say inflamed, it was it, it didn't harm our relationship at all, but it was just that they they momentarily took it as an affront before they kind of sat down and thought about it. And all all I'm saying with that is I've never seen any value from it. Not that it doesn't have value. Right. So when you look at, uh, 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 you know, the, the, the cat dog relationship, whether you're one side or the other, you're not saying that the animals themselves are whatever. You're saying that you have no specific connection to said animal in question, not that they don't carry that kind of quality. That is the open ended statement of it, that you would need to fully explore your biases in order to in order to properly get it. So here's the breakdown of, of the cat and the dog people from there. Dog people, according to Gosling's research, tend to have. And this is the important key. I'm not sure if that's axiomatically No. This is of key importance. There we go. That's uh that's probably a probably a more grammatically correct way of saying it. Um dog people tend to have higher sociability, are more extroverted and more agreeable, a la the big five ocean personality principles, slightly more conscientious in the sense of more self-discipline, conscientiousness for emotion again, uh, which is something that is needed to complete tasks and goals. They often have more conventional hobbies and interests. And it sounds cliche to say, but dog people are often the ones who go for the 2.4 kids, the house, the marriage, that type of thing. So what do you think then cat people are by default if cats and dogs are considered domestic opposites? The, uh, the information purports to connect to the slightly more neurotic tendencies within Ocean. Uh, not the connotations around the word within the personality principles of, of neuroticism. Uh, however, they are slightly more open than dog people. Introversion is prime. If they do have an openness, it's towards 
uh, and well, rather for the appreciation of art, emotion, unusual ideas, curiosity, right? Which is my my cat person tendencies coming to the fore. I'm as to quote Joey, I'm as curious as George. Um can be cold at times, holding unconventional beliefs, hobbies, and interests. Now, here's a, here's a couple of fun points that came out of this work, right? You can look at cat people as being low on dominance, timid, and bashful, but I, you know, the, the number of cat people I know that are high on dominance, right? But it is a, it is a trait that comes as a byproduct of other things. Dominance from uh, assertiveness, dominance from uh, uh, intellectual connection and motivation, you know, etc., etc. So there is grey area to all of this that exists. It's important that it's important that you know that that comes across. Uh, hen, nor me, nor me at all. I am I'm not your typical dog person at all. <laughs> want to get a cat get a cat right we have one rolling rolling around the, i say rolling he is quite a posh thing we call him the portly prince um but yeah there, there is one rolling around the house that uh that came with my wife you know it was it's the package deal <laughs> anyway but these are the uh these are the interesting traits that come out of this study for me uh where are we da -da -da -da. going out and testing the theories if a dog owner had found a kitten or had been asked to keep a kitten they would do so whereas cat owners would not do the same for a small puppy stats that is it within the five thousand people people who own both cats and dogs tended to reflect similar personality traits to that of purely dog owners People who currently have no pets but grew up with cats will often adopt the cat people personality traits and the same for those that have no pets but grew up with dogs. Um, so yeah, it's I'd like I, I, I find that type of stuff fascinating because it, it kind of makes me think retrospectively of how you would question someone about that so as not to prime or prompt and not that it can't be done it's but you know it's it's been done I, I i just get curious again about the the specific questions that, that would be asked right so there was a couple of there was a couple of examples that i went through here's one for you <laughs> it would go well with my broom and <laughs> I don't know if you if you pop your hat on and do some sweeping up i'm sure the dog would do that like when the hoover comes out anyway it's a digression so uh yeah here's an example let, let, we'll just do the first one a woman running alone on a crowded footpath listening to alternative rock and roll on her headphones with a tattoo on her forearm of her favorite line from her favorite poem just on that, and based on the information from cat and dog people, what's the most likely connection? Most likely connection. Come back to that at the end, because I came back to it at the end of the chapter. <laughs> um, so then, then it moves into um, spotting the uh, the animal in question by the hair alone <laughs> i initially wrote this up in um in a, in a in a book for mentalists called smug guesswork <laughs> which i thought was a fun title um because that's that's really what you know some of these readers are doing myself included at the time it was it was smug guesswork. Uh, oh, uh, Bilbo, in, in connection to the the question, cat definitely. Okay, as I say, we'll come back to it shortly. So, 
in, in case it wasn't obvious from the book alone, which you guys have have totally got, obviously, right? <laughs> um, this the this part of the chapter is not, could not, and should not be considered a forensic analysis because we're doing it by sight. If the if you are looking to, um, to kind of what's the word I need? Do this for certainty. You would need the right equipment, the the right microscopes, the right lenses, uh, and the right kind of laboratory for specific analysis. So, if it is that you are under the under the impression that you're going to look at some uh, some hair and then go dog, wire haired fox terrier, and it be that clear, put that out of your head right now. <laughs> put that out of your head right now, because though for every for one every thousand that it could happen there's obviously 999 that you miss and if you're hedging yourself into that kind of requirement for a certainty bias missing other information by the oh question in question in let's have a look would you also say that pets could also even help you in deducing stuff like what type of place they live as cats are more accepted by landlords and apartments absolutely absolutely I, i'll tell you now we won't be going into that today because that type of stuff is in uh, is in later work so we will come back to that at a later stage but as we're sticking specifically to the monographs itself as in the first iteration we're just going through the stuff in the chapter right but you you're absolutely right you're absolutely right. The more knowledge that you can bring to the area that you're in, in terms of the housing and the frequency of each relative to the areas that animals could be walked. I realize an animal can be walked everywhere, but the uh, uh, the requirement to have a field or an open area or a park within like walking distance or uh, you know a short drive from the house where person where somebody lives in order to have a dog this is a consideration anyway so my dog's wandering around here lex come on oh peace sweet pea you can't come up and say hello there's not enough room under the table for you there isn't don't climb you don't do that either <laughs> i'm i'm in the middle of a stream are you gonna have a seat? Drop it like it's hot. Go on. Go on. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't, I, I didn't mean uh, to get quite so uh, involved in a conversation with my dog. But right, there there is a, a, a set of guiding lights that we can look at with. Um, with hair and in terms of its rigidity and the bulb that's connected to it right it's rig it's rigid it's rigidity and the bulb which is the base if you were to pull the hand out uh, hand out it's because i've just looked at a comment from you hen there you go <laughs> you're on my mind already um if you were to just pull the hair out singularly the bulb is what connects connects it to the bottom <laughs> teetering on smart no hey miss riffraff's here good evening um just call me hen uh, at the moment the only pets in my home are two rabbits that are actually my sons see there you go but they like me better well who wouldn't right who wouldn't i like it and miss riffraff good evening welcome it's nice to see you kind of <laughs> i know it's just a, a profile picture on the screen but there we are anyway what i would like to say we could go into the details and i could describe it to you these these kinds of uh, unique changes and it's not some kind of stupid ploy for you to buy the book if you don't have it but i would be doing you a disservice it would require this and me talking about it and describing it it won't help you it won't translate through a podcast <laughs> it won't right you could you could if you don't want to buy the monographs you could buy some forensic books on the topic I itself there are many and you'll get detailed uh, uh, photographs and images that have been taken under microscope so you can see it so 
there are ways that we can separate this kind of inform this kind of information out through through dogs, cats, and the smaller of animals like rabbits, like guinea pigs, like mice, like rats. Uh, uh, these these types of things. Um, but obviously, with the mice and the rats and the guinea pig, the transference elements, a la low cards principle, they become less and less so because they're finer and the the interactive qualities of the animal with a person are statistically less common so get the book is what i'm saying <laughs> if you if you want the breakdown uh, uh i'm not going to go into it here it's it's a it's a disservice for you and would do nothing other than waste your valuable time and for for the folks in the uk I'm trying to do my best, Bill Pullman. Today, we celebrate our Independence Day. Just less aliens and lasers. Kind of significant, right? Still kind of significant. Um, <laughs> so, my, my fellow British amigos, I hope you manage to stick the knife into the Tory bastards in whichever way you felt like doing it. Whether it's Count Binface or whatever. I hope you manage to. Anyway. The thing that the uh, uh, the the um the pet hair then builds off is base knowledge. Because if you're looking at short hair versus long hair and specific um colours which are statistically more common with specific kinds of animals, like if you were to look at a German Shepherd or a Doberman or a, a Rottweiler, for example, the most common colour schemes that those pet hairs will run over are your browns and your blacks, right? That's the most common, if not all of them. Obviously, I don't know every dog and every, uh, every uh, creation that exists or has existed, so we leave room for this possibility to arise in our reads. The chapter then goes on to give you Oh, hen, unlucky. Well, we can we can hate them in spirit all the same. <laughs> we can hate them in spirit all the same. Um, yes, but the, the, the chapter then goes on to um, the top 10 most popular dogs that are also most common to be in houses with children, uh, the top 10 most popular medium-sized dogs and then big dogs, and then the same for cat breeds, just in terms of the most popular cat breeds. And this is in terms of demographics that are connected to animals that have been bought through uh, registered owners. Right. So there are a lot of unregistered sales that go on everywhere. Of course there are. But this stats is only in connection to the registration. All right. I got my Guy Fawkes costume out of the attic just in case. <laughs> Come on, I'm I'm hoping for the. Uh, um, I th I think it was the Netherlands, uh, and I think it was the 1600s. Um, it it could just be a, a a bullshit made up story on the internet as well. I have no grounding in it. I saw it like once or twice and didn't look at it further. But I like the idea of the story, in that uh, uh, in that. Um, the the commoners let's call them we are in the commonwealth the commoners uh in that in that time of 1600 and whatever in netherlands became so enraged at the way they were treated by their government and the elected officials at the time that they charged what would have been their houses of parliament killed and ate the politicians in question i think that's hilarious um and, you know, I, I can't see Rishi tasting that nice anyway. Um, but yeah, then the, the, the chapter kind of builds to a, a, a guide to detection of other household pets. And we've already covered quite a lot up until this stage. Quite a lot. And then it goes through photos in there to uh, give you a chance. Now, the photos in the book, are not, they, they don't come out the best. Right, because these are photos of real people. It's not stock photos, or, or you know, some kind of AI generated. This is a photo of a person with information that can be confirmed. <laughs> right, done. 
So the, the, the photos themselves are connected to the test uh, of the other information that we've brought in to be able to do that. Now, uh, we then go into a couple of scripts of recordings of me actually doing this. This is verbatim recordings of me uh, of me doing this with actual people that we've gone through. Uh, uh, then uh, there was a survey carried out in the US regarding the relationship between pet ownership and job title and or salary. The survey was carried survey. Well, the survey was carried out by Harris Interactive and questioned over two thousand four hundred people. Um, and then it gives you things like employees in top level positions primarily connected with being dog owners. A snake and other reptile owners are among the highest paid workers often encroaching on the six figure boundary. Um, oh, hang on, comments popping. Yeah. It's a shame the raving loony party is nothing anymore. They would make more sense than the options we do. There was a like I, I mean I feel just as badly for the Americans in their vote that's that's coming up as well. I'm sidetracking away from animals, and uh, you watch all of the videos that come out. But there was this one bit of a John Stewart video that really cracked me up because it's it connects to the UK as well. And he just sat there, looked at the camera, and went, "This can't be real life, can it?" <laughs> Right. And you look at the choices that, you know, they have. And, uh, you know, Bill Bailey said it best, a choice between an apoplectic nar narcissist and a narcoleptic apophist. <laughs> right. How do you how do you decide? <laughs> and it's just the same uh, as as over here. How, how, how do you decide? <laughs> this can't be real life. Anyway, I digress. Uh, Bilbo, that's what I love about the second book. The QR codes were genius. Thank you, thank you. I um, I, w I wanted a way to try and make uh, the second one as interactive as we possibly could. Um, and then yeah, so the the the, the chapter then ends with the answers to the test, of which a woman running alone on a crowded footpath, listening to alternative rock on her headphones, with a tattoo on her forearm of her favourite line from her favourite poem was indeed a cat person. So there we there we go folks we've uh, we've done another look here. Um, oh sorry Paolo missed your comment sir. Uh, for some reason this reminded me of the albine bear that was misidentified as a polar bear and taken to the arctic. Oh the poor guy. Uh, probably not a real story. But yeah, I mean, sad, all the same. Right, guys, this draws this evening's festivities to a close. Uh, I'm going to go and eat some food because I am hungry. Uh, what other reason to eat some food, right? With that in mind, I'm going to love you and leave you, and I shall see you again next time for another one. Have fun. Bye.